I'm Everett Mayor Ray Stephenson, and it's my great pleasure and honor to welcome all of you here today. We're pleased to be here today and so glad that you've joined us for this exciting celebration of Henry M. Jackson's centennial and dedication of this amazing bust at Grand Avenue Park. A resolution in honor of Everett's favorite son, Henry M. Jackson, on his 100th birthday, that May 31st, 2012, be declared Scoop Jackson Day in the city of Everett. Whereas the centennial of the birth of Everett's favorite son, Henry Martin Jackson, on May 31st, 2012, will be celebrated by friend and friends and well-wishers in Everett and other Snohomish County communities and in towns and neighborhoods throughout Washington. And whereas Scoop Jackson, born in Everett, of Norwegian immigrant parents Peter and Maureen Jackson, graduated from Everett Public Schools, served as a student leader and Boy Scout, as a paper boy, establishing the uninterrupted delivery of the Everett Herald. And whereas in 1938, at the age of 26, Scoop Jackson was elected Snohomish County Prosecuting Attorney just two years after graduating from the University of Washington Law School. And whereas earning a strong reputation as a dedicated foe and prosecutor of illegal gambling, vice, and corruption in Snohomish County, Scoop Jackson was elected in 1940 to the United States House of Representatives for the Evergreen State's 2nd Congressional District. And whereas Scoop Jackson was re-elected five times to his congressional seat, won election to the United States Senate in 1952, and was re-elected five times to his Senate seat. And whereas Scoop Jackson, in more than four de decades of unserving service, until taken from his family and country by his untimely death, September 1st, 1983, established a steady and respected grasp of subjects ranging from public lands and conservation to energy and natural resources to national security and human rights. And whereas an environmentalist many years before the word became an American lexicon, Scoop Jackson wrote the groundbreaking National Environmental Policy Act and championed legislation preserving such vast and unspoiled Washington treasures as the North Cascades National Park and the Alpine Lakes Wilderness, and whereas Scoop Jackson sponsored the Endangered American Wilderness Act, the Redwood National Park Act, the Federal Land Policy and Management Act, the Federal Lands for Parks and Recreation Act, the Youth Conservation Corps Act, and the National Environmental Policy Act, the National Trail System Act, and the National Historic Preservation Act, the Wild and Scenic River Act, the Land and Water Conservation Fund Act, and the National Wilderness Act. And whereas Scoop Jackson was an early and vigorous opponent of Senator Joe McCarthy's red baiting, a strong proponent of labor and civil rights, and dating back to the Truman administration, a vocal advocate for universal health care and whereas Henry M. Jackson also played an instrumental role in the creation of Naval Station Everett, Naval Air Station Woodby Island, Naval Base Kitsap, and Madigan Army Medical Center. And whereas the centennial of his birth of this Everett native, United States Senator Scoop Jackson would be honored by true friends of all human rights and democracy nationwide and across the globe. Now therefore, be it resolved by the Mayor and Everett City Council that the City of Everett join the entire state of Washington in the celebration of the centennial of his birth. Further be it resolved that May 31st, 2012 be declared Scoop Jackson Day in the City of Everett and that all residents take time to consider the values of service above self. <coughs> now it's my great pleasure to welcome Everett's friend, Congressman Rick Larson. Uh, thanks, Ray, and uh, Helen, and Anna Marie, and, and Peter. It's a great pleasure to uh, be here to celebrate um, <clears throat> Senator Jackson's uh, centennial. 
uh, as well with the folks here at the City of Everett, Snohomish County, and, and uh, surrounding areas. Uh, the resolution Ray read uh, covered uh, some of the things I was going to say, but I'll uh, <laughs> put it in non resolution form um, a little bit. Uh, but first, I want to uh, um, point out uh, three, three of the legacies I think that uh, Senator Jackson uh, left. Uh, first off, uh, the, well, there's probably four legacies. I think the first legacy is, is being in, the, in this seat in the second congressional district. Um, uh, no one ever says, oh, yeah, that's Rick Larson's seat. <laughs> it's usually Al Swift's seat or Lloyd Mead's seat or Scoop Jackson's seat, and, uh, uh, which I think is a, a compliment to the impact uh, somebody like Senator Jackson uh, had even before uh, he was a uh, senator. Um, the second, second legacy I want to point out, it, I think really comes into play, uh, played out over the last two and a half, three weeks, um, when you consider the uh, impact that uh, Senator Jackson had on, uh, from the Democratic side, working with uh, Dr. Kissinger and President Nixon to open up China and bring China into the uh, community, of, uh, community of nations, which eventually led to uh, the 79 reforms in China and the legacy of engagement since that the U.S. has had uh, with, uh, with China. Despite some of the challenges that we face in that relationship, it was very important to uh, Senator Jackson uh, at the time for the United States to uh, see China as a potential partner, potential uh, uh, collaborator in world affairs, and that has evolved over time. But I think the second part of that has to do certainly with the last three weeks where we've seen just how important uh, human rights has been to our foreign policy when you consider the uh, uh, the case of uh, Chung Guang Chung who arrived in uh, arrived in Newark, uh, New Jersey yesterday. Um, if we if we didn't have that strong uh, legacy of human rights that, that was put forth by uh, Senator Jackson as part of our foreign policy, um, then you know th we would not have that, that pressure in the United States to make that happen what happened yesterday. Uh, so I, there's, a, in my view, a direct line, uh, direct line to Senator Jackson's legacy in that. The third, third point I want to make is about the about the environment. Um, Ray mentioned the uh, National Environmental Policy Act, um, the North Cascades, uh, a variety of other areas. When you consider the work that uh, Senator Murray uh, and I have done on the Wild Sky Wilderness Area, or what Senator Cantwell and I are doing up in San Juan's with uh, potential national monument status of the BL, uh, Bureau of Land Management lands. Um, in uh, in the San Juans, that that is another you know direct line uh, of the legacy of the work that uh, Senator Jackson put forth. And then, uh, obviously, behind me and in front of me is the the legacy of Naval Station Everett and the uh, and what that meant uh, to Senator Jackson to have that established here. But more importantly, um, his uh, strong uh, strong defense record uh, here in the U.S. Defense record at the time uh, he as well received some criticism for, but uh, as well received uh, quite a bit of support for as well. Um, and uh, so, uh, again, a legacy that uh, a lot of us continue to, continue to uphold serving on the Armed Services Committee. Um, finally, let me uh, point out two things. First off, uh, uh, I have a resolution uh, myself, uh, um, but it's introduced in the House of Representatives. And, um, we can't get sponsors on it while we're out of session. So we've got four of the four of the eight remain four of the eight uh, members of Congress in the House on it, and we'll get the others on it as well. But um, we we'll have copies of that out. But finally, a, a story that my mom likes to tell about her interaction uh, with her father um, before he was her father. Uh, in fact, it was a date before the honeymoon. Um, he needed money for the honeymoon, <laughs> and so he had to go to the bank. Uh, Senator Henry Jackson had to go to the bank to get money for his honeymoon. And this was, uh, remember, remember, remember when banks had tellers? And people were in? So my mom was one of those people. She was a teller at the bank at Seafirst uh, downtown Seattle. And um, he goes in and he um, needs to withdraw money. And she happens to be the teller at the booth where he's getting money from. And she asks him for his ID. His identification, which is bank policy, and um, he said, "Well, I'm, I'm Senator Henry Jackson, 
She goes, I know, I know, but I need to ask for your, um, your uh, ID, it's bank policy. And he goes, okay, well, the manager overheard this story and uh, overheard this going on. He comes over and he starts apologizing to Senator Jackson that how, we're so sorry we're asking for ID. And, and he graciously says to my mom and to the bank manager, says, your policy is to show the ID. I have my ID. She is doing her job. She's supposed to do this. I'm just a guy here getting money, uh, a withdrawal for my honeymoon. And here's my ID. Here's proof of who I am, of who I am. And uh, I want to, you know, be sure that you understand, bank manager, that she's doing her job, and that's all she was doing. And, and you should be thanking her for that. So it's sort of the uh, um, for all the talk about Senator Scoop Jackson, uh, has clearly yet maintained a very humble side to him uh, throughout his life and throughout his career. It could have been uh, could have been the Norwegian in him, um, but. Uh, uh, be that as it may, uh, that humility is a, a good lesson for uh, all elected officials, uh, including myself, uh, to learn. And that's one of the other legacies I think that we should uh, remember about Senator Jackson. So, um, with that, uh, congratulations, uh, Everett, uh, on the centennial and the uh, revealing of the bust of Senator Jackson. Really, really glad to be here. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Congressman, very much. You're representing the 2nd District very well. I know Scoop would be uh, very proud of you. At this uh, time, I'd like to um, invite John Hempelman, President of the Henry M. Jackson Foundation, to say a few words on behalf of the Foundation. John? Thanks, Ray. Before I do that, I'd like to, um, as they say on the Senate floor, yield some of my time to uh, Sheila Babb, um, who is senior staff for Senator Patty Murray. And uh, Senator Murray couldn't be here today, but we're delighted Sheila is here. Come on up, Sheila. Good afternoon. Senator Murray's very sorry that she could not be here. And uh, she did send a greeting, though, which I would like to read. Senator Jackson's legacy in our state is hard to match. A similar bust to this one sits by my office in the Russell Senate Office Building, and it is a reminder to me and all of my colleagues what you can accomplish on behalf of the people of your state. Whether working on security issues or protecting our state's pristine wilderness areas, Senator Jackson serves as a role model on how you get things done in the Senate through hard work, collaboration, and persistence. Thank you all for being here today to honor a man who did so much for our country and who serves as an inspiration to the entire Washington State delegation in Congress. Sincerely, Patty Murray. Thank you, Sheila, and thank you, Senator Murray. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank Ray and Carol, um, City of Everett, um, the police force that are here, um, the Parks Department folks that were so much part of this event, but also the permanent uh, symbol of Scoop Jackson and his relationship to Everett now literally anchored in the ground uh, in the, uh, the dirt of the city of Everett. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I also want to thank uh, the family, Helen and Anna Marie and Peter. Um, you, know, you wouldn't think it would be appropriate to thank them for letting us put the bust of the senator across from their house, but I do think it is something we should thank them for. You know, he was a one of the most important men in the world when he was alive. And um, this is still the Grand Avenue Park. It's just going to have um, new meaning with uh, the senator's bust here. I also want to thank uh, the staff of the Henry M. Jackson Foundation that uh, participated in, in developing this idea and in helping to uh, fund the pedestal and uh, the installation of the bust here. Um, I love that house. i got to tell you a little personal story why I love that house so much and you'd be surprised as to why I love it. Obviously Helen's there and Peter and Anna Marie grew up there. But uh, in the summers when they got out of school, Helen and Peter and Anna Marie would come home to Everett and stay in the house here on Grand Avenue. And it was a day before that or a day after they left, the senator would call me up and he'd say, want free rent? And so I'd, <laughs> I'd get to move into the house in, in Washington and cut the lawn and let him drive me to work. So I always loved this house. Uh, 
because I had free rent for uh, two and a half months. Um, Sheila, uh, in the letter from the senator, said something that's uh, particularly appropriate. There are three versions of this bust. One is in the University of Washington at the uh, Jackson School. Um, the other is in what we called in those days the old Senate office building, now the Russell Senate office building. And the third is here. And I think it does, it does symbolize the senator's career. One of them in Washington where he was so influential. And I'll tell you, 30 years, almost 30 years after his death, he is still a force in the nation's capital. And he is a force overseas as well. Um, it's remarkable how his legacy has endured. So one in Washington, one at the university where he considered the academic uh, part of, of, of our culture to be critical to us understanding history and what we need to do. And now the third, here in his hometown, this state that he loved so much. Um, and Congressman Larson and um, the mayor told you something about the legacy that is in the Cascades and in the San Juans and in the city of Everett because of, of, of the senator. So it's appropriate that that bust is here. Um, so those are my comments on behalf of the foundation. Thank you for coming. Um, we're now going to have some comments from uh, Anna Marie Jackson. It's a, it's a treat to be here, and this is such a fabulous, special occasion. I can't tell you how thrilled we are. Um, we are very honored to have the unveiling of the bust of my father on what would have been his 100th birthday uh, this month. And I would really like to thank uh, Mayor Ray Stephenson for making this all possible. In appreciation for all of your efforts and all that you have done, um, I will be presenting to you a flag that has been that will be flown over the U.S. Capitol on May 31st of this year on what would have been his 100th birthday. So you will be receiving that um, shortly. So thank you, Mayor. The placement of the bust at Grand Avenue Park is just ideal. I, I couldn't ask for a better place. It is, as I remember, walking as a kid with my father on those summer evenings after dinner. We'd walk along the park, and my dad would look out at the Olympic Mountains and just say, how lucky we are to live in such a beautiful, beautiful state as Washington. I just want to take a few minutes to um, talk about the artist, Wendy Ross, who sculpted the bust of my father. Um, it's interesting, she, she is an internationally known bronze artist who has created portraits of such public figures as Justice William O. Douglas. This is my husband, Dan. <laughs> He's a great husband. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jim, too. <laughs> um, so Wendy Ross has also done busts of Congressman Philip Burton, Rosa Parks, Dr. Martin Luther King. Her works appear in the U.S. Capitol and the U.S. Supreme Court. She has also designed and completed a full seated bronze for the National Mall in Washington, D.C. of George Mason. In 1984, Wendy Ross was commissioned by the Jackson Foundation to create a bust of my father. She was the perfect person to do this work. Wendy was the daughter of my pediatrician in Washington, D.C., and she happened to have been an intern in my dad's office back in 1966 because of her interest in Russian politics. In addition, my father played matchmaker and introduced her to a fellow by the name of Jim who worked in the Energy and Natural Resources Committee. Ten, day, ten years later, I should say, they were married. Besides knowing my father, Wendy looked at photographs of my dad, videotapes of his campaign to see him in action, she also um, talked with staffers, old friends, and of course my mother to gather insight into his character. 
The whole process took her goodness, I guess it was a little bit over a year to create the bust. She made a mold from clay and then she did a, and then she did three castings from the original mold. As we talked about earlier, this is one of the one of the three castings that's here at Grand Avenue Park. After we do the unveiling of the bust today, I would like you to take a look at the amazing detail that Wendy has done on the bust. It's just incredible. You can see Dad's tie is a, his striped tie is a little bit askew. His comb, his hair is combed just how he combed it. His his face is smooth and his eyes are focused, like he's listening to you. And yet his mouth is slightly open, like he's ready to talk to you right then and there. Wendy has done a remarkable job in capturing his essence. We are thankful to the city of Everett and to the Jackson Foundation for helping to place this bust here so that the public can continue to be reminded of not only who he was, but also of his importance to and affection for his hometown of Everett. Thank you. Now I'd like uh, to invite Peter Jackson, Scoop Jackson's son, to the podium. Where's your raincoat? I'm a Northwestern. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here you go. Sure. Yeah, yeah no, I, I feel funny. <laughs> um, we're all getting wet, so uh, we'll we'll go ahead and, and do the bust unveiling here in a, a second. Um, I too want to echo what others have said and, and to thank uh, Mayor Stephenson and Carol Thomas, who played an instrumental role in, in making this happen. Um, I thankfully, because I don't have any aesthetic sense, uh, did not uh, really give much input into into placement. Because uh, if I saw it, I would actually say, you know, he could be facing kind of towards Judge Wilson's old house. Looking east, kind of where the sun rises, and looking towards the North Cascades, because I think in many ways that was one of his greatest legacies uh, to the state and to this country. Um, I think politicians uh, measure out their lives sometimes in uh, re-election, but statesmen measure out their lives in getting things done, and uh, I think uh, in the matter of my dad, I think he was both a politician and a statesman, and I think that's I think that's a great legacy. A um, hundred years from now, this park is here and the statue is still here. I'm afraid people have probably forgotten some of the facts and details of this person's life. Maybe they won't even remember the guy's name. But they will know that this was someone who came from Everett and who was emblematic of this city who, whose values and character flowed from uh, being a child of immigrants, from being someone who uh, spent all of his formative years with working class kids and even though it's a cliche, not forgetting where he came from. And knowing that this is not just some kind of iconic image of someone who was a politician and was in Washington, D.C. for a long time, but was someone who they could emulate, uh, that they know that it's that example of service to others is possible. So again, on behalf of the family and with thanks to my sister and members of the committee, um, let's go ahead and get this unveiled. Yeah. <laughs> 